Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. I also have a Substack page for those who want uh, premium content. Let's talk about some recent news that's going to impact how I play the betting market, sports betting market. Larry Fitzgerald isn't sure that he wants to play football this year. That's very bad news for the Arizona Cardinals, who need to spread the field to give DeAndre Hopkins and A.J. Green, a new arrival, room to operate. Understand, neither Hopkins nor A.J. Green are known as burners, right? They need spacing. That could be a problem this year if Larry Fitzgerald doesn't play. I also question whether a competitor and a likely future Hall of Famer like Larry Fitzgerald, who came close to winning, but who ultimately lost the only Super Bowl he was in, would lack the drive to play on a team that he thought had a legitimate chance of going deep in the playoffs. I get the feeling there's more to the story here. Now, the team already seems to be falling apart. Look at Kyler Murray's dismal, and folks, let's underline that word, dismal numbers against the Kansas City Chiefs in their recent preseason game. Now, folks, you're playing the Chiefs. The Chiefs have represented the AFC in the last two Super Bowls. They've been in the last three AFC Championship games. You mean to tell me that the Cardinals couldn't get inspired against this level of competition? Understand, on six dropbacks, Kyler Murray was sacked twice. He ended the game passing for less than five yards. Moreover, the team's age is already showing. In the offseason, everyone was excited. They signed people like J.J. Watt. Folks, it's the third week of August. J.J. Watt has already had a hamstring injury. Right? When you have an older player with an injury history, that's what Watt has had in recent years. Having hamstring problems this early in the season, that doesn't bode well for his performance. The NFC West is simply too competitive. To have a team like Arizona, with Larry Fitzgerald less than inspired, not inspired enough to play, right? to have this team be competitive in the division, they're going to have to right the ship. Let's just say this preseason, we haven't seen enough to think that this team can get by Seattle, San Francisco, or the Rams. Now, speaking of San Francisco, in the Bay Area, everyone is hot and bothered over Trey Lance. Right? He's the new guy. He has a strong arm. In a preseason game, he completed an 80-yard play, right? Folks, people need to realize that the rookie quarterback is not ready to start. The preseason's a charade. They designed some plays where some guys will get open, and early draft picks who were drafted because they have athletic gifts because they have a strong arm, will be able to complete the pass. Folks, we knew Trey Lance had a strong arm before the 80-yard play, right? You understand it takes a lot more to play quarterback in the National Football League than just having a strong arm. So those of you about to have fantasy football drafts, need to make a note of that. Jimmy G, as long as he's healthy, and that, of course, has been an ongoing open question throughout his career, 
But as long as Jimmy G is healthy, he's going to play for at least the first month of the season. Right? I don't believe, despite all the hype, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, I don't believe any, any of these rookie quarterbacks are prepared to hit the ground running. Let's shift up. According to reports, a grand jury has been impaneled to investigate allegations against Deshaun Watson. Folks, let me be clear and unambiguous. That is the end of the Houston Texans season. Watson is an elite quarterback. He's so elite that with around a couple dozen women coming forward, with allegations against him. Reports are that some teams are monitoring the situation because they might be interested in picking him up if he can avoid criminal charges. He carried this team last year. Houston is awful. All of this talk about Houston bouncing back ignores reality. Let's shift up. Sadly, the Deshaun Watson situation is not the only dicey situation involving allegations of sexual assault. Now, the Dodgers situation with Trevor Bauer is so dicey that we now know from reports that Bauer apparently was into S&M. At least one of the women who came forward, and viewers here need to realize there's more than one woman involved in the Trevor Bauer allegations. Right? They also need to contemplate the idea that these were not isolated incidents. That Trevor Bauer was living a lifestyle where he had certain fetishes that involved him getting physical with women, and I mean very physical, right? Some of the allegations include claims of punching. So just understand, at least one of the women who came forward sent text messages to Bauer expressing some excitement over the physical role play and roughness of an encounter they had. Now, it appears that Bauer was overly rough. I'm not here to bash s and I'm not. But let's just say Bauer did more than hair pulling and slapping. Right? Bauer is more physical than that. Also, Bauer wasn't the kind of guy, according to these reports, who would talk to his partner, come up with things like safe words, an understanding of limits. No, no. So at least one of these alleged encounters looks to me to be questionable in terms of whether consent was given. It looks even more questionable than one can imagine in an encounter that involves punching and things like that. So Bauer has already been put on the ineligible list until the end of August, right? Folks, based on the seriousness of the allegations that I've read, and based on the fact that I get the feeling this is a lifetime lifestyle, that there are other women who Bauer has had very physical encounters with. Right? So Bauer might be hesitant to settle claims because there might be other claims. Right? This is going to be extremely messy because you can imagine 
that Bauer's defense is going to be, based on at least some of the text messages I've read, consent. Right? The women are going to say, look, I was examined after a Bauer encounter, and I was beaten up. Right? Beaten up. Bauer is going to claim consent. The criminal standard is very high. It's proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Let's just say that these facts don't lend themselves to a quick resolution, to a quick series of civil, of civil settlements, and a quick dismissal of any criminal investigations given the fact that the women were beaten up. Right? So, I'm not expecting, even though I have money on the Dodgers, right? Let's remember, the Dodgers picked up Max Scherzer. But I'm not expecting Bauer to be available this season. I question whether Bauer is going to be eligible to play for at least the first two months of next season, right? Understand, this has been hushed up, but Major League Baseball has a huge PR problem on their hands here. So don't rely on Trevor Bauer ever taking the field again for the Dodgers this year. And understand, while the Dodgers, at least according to Pythagorean analysis, uh, seem to be the best team in their division, they're getting challenged by the San Francisco Giants right now. Folks, that's a competitive race. I ultimately expect the Dodgers to uh, win out, right? I think of all the teams in baseball, in my opinion, uh, as of, let's say, Saturday, August 21st, I believe the Dodgers are the most likely to win the World Series. But just understand, they're not leading their division as I make this video. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.